Heart failure is a very complicated disease, and covering the whole topic can span many lectures. So today we're going to focus on the key medications for the management of chronic heart failure. Our first objective is to differentiate the types of heart failure, and this is because our medical management depends on the type of heart failure. Secondly, we'll understand the classification of heart failure symptoms. In order to be able to titrate medications, we typically have to titrate to symptomology, and we want to make sure we're communicating that appropriately. And lastly, we want to recognize the key pharmacologic treatments in patients with stable heart failure with specifically reduced ejection fraction. We're not discussing today the treatment of acute exacerbations of heart failure, and we're not going to be talking about preserved ejection fraction heart failure. When you think about heart failure patients, the first differentiation to make is whether they have heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, which is typically considered less than 40%, or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, which is typically greater than 60%. The ejection fraction can be found on the patient's most recent echocardiogram. Remember that ejection fraction can worsen or improve over time, and it is not a static number. Let's focus on patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction from here on in. This is typically a more common presentation on our medical units and as well is better studied in literature. After identifying the type of heart failure, we should also be able to classify a patient's heart failure symptoms, and we do so by the NYHA classification scale. Patients with NYHA class 1 symptoms have no symptoms with regular physical activity whereas patients with NYHA class 4 symptoms have symptoms at rest. Patients who have some symptoms with just ordinary physical activity are considered class 2, whereas patients with symptoms with less than ordinary physical activity are considered class 3. As a reference point, I consider ordinary activity of at least one flight of stairs or two to three blocks on flat ground. This classification is important because we typically titrate our medical management based on symptom control. So today we're only providing a preliminary overview in hopes that you'll be able to recognize the key medications that these patients should be on at baseline. It doesn't include the nuances of advanced therapy options. Barring any contraindications, all heart failure with reduced ejection fraction patients should be on an ACE inhibitor or an ARB. Examples of an ACE inhibitor may include perindopril or ramipril. Examples of an ARB may include candesartan, herbisartan, or valsartan. As well, these patients should also be on a beta blocker, and we commonly use metoprolol, bisoprolol, or carvedilol for the purpose of heart failure. Finally, if patients have an ejection fraction of less than 30%, they should also be on a mineral corticoid receptor antagonist, and the most commonly used one is spironolactone. To medically optimize our heart failure patients, they should be on all three of these therapies at maximum doses. If they aren't on these therapies, we should think about why not. Is it a contraindication like hyperkalemia? And finally, if they continue to have class 3 or 4 symptoms despite medical optimization, then they should probably be referred to a cardiologist to consider other therapeutic options. We should also consider the non-pharmacologic recommendations for heart failure patients. All heart failure patients should adhere to a low-salt diet, or less than 2 grams of salt per day. The evidence for a fluid-restricted diet is very weak, and is only really indicated if patients are refractory to diuretic therapy. We also recommend that patients weigh themselves daily in order to monitor their accumulation of fluid. Even in an inpatient setting, this is more accurate than measurements of intake and output. Finally, our heart failure patients should have at least 30 minutes of aerobic exercise 5 days per week. Now the next time you have a heart failure patient admitted to you, you'll be able to take a look at their medications and see if they're optimized prior to their discharge. (laughs) Oi, 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 oi.